In this video, we're going to take the force versus displacement data for a typical UTM tension test and convert it to engineering stress and engineering strain. Then we will plot the stress versus strain curve for that material. Hopefully this video helps you sort through all that data and uh, get that plot made. So I'm gonna do this for one particular sample, in this case, the brass sample. Uh, remember, the data we get from the UTM machine is displacement and force, and we, we need to convert that to strain and stress. So I went ahead and added a column for strain next uh, in column D there. You can do that by just right-clicking on the column and saying insert, and it'll insert a column before uh, whichever column you select. Now remember, strain is change in length over initial length, so I need the initial length for each of these specimens. Um, rather than linking it all back to the one sheet that has all that data, I'm going to just you know, move those numbers over into this particular sheet for this particular sample. Now, the, this particular data from the testing machine was output as inches and pound force, um, and of course the measurements we took were in millimeters, and so I need to do a quick little conversion here. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Uh, make sure I convert uh, and account for millimeters. So I'll enter that in here. Uh, and so I'll have the initial length, the initial diameter, and then eventually the initial area here uh, in both SI units and US customary units. Um, again, using the right click insert, uh, this case I inserted a row. Uh, I'm going to enter in the formula for a circle here and get the initial area. So you can see in the formula bar, I've used the Excel function for pi, so that's uh, capital P, capital I, parenthesis, parenthesis. Uh, and here I'm just formatting, uh, instead of having a little carrot to the uh, two to give, a, give me a number squared, I'm just using the format font uh, to get a superscript there. Now I'm ready to do the calculations for strain. So I'm going to set up a formula here. I'm going to set strain equal to the change in length over the original length. Uh, so I select the, the column uh, C, the value in cell C13 as the initial, the change in length. And then the initial length is going to be there in cell E7. Uh, and then I went through and I used the dollar signs to lock E7 so that as I drag and drop this formula and copy it to the other cells below it, uh, that I always reference back to E7. Uh, usually I you know, drag and drop this and I do a quick little check. Uh, as you saw me check there, and then once I was happy that it was doing what I thought it was doing, uh, I went ahead and copied it to all the other cells, all the way through all the data. Now, there's a lot of data in the, these uh, spreadsheets uh, because we do take you know, data, it's like almost every tenth of a second or a uh, quarter of a second here. Looks like every tenth of a second uh, was recorded in the program here. Uh, so that's, that's just a lot of data, but that's okay. Um, the computer will handle that for us. Uh, when we come to stress, we need to decide what kind of units we're going to do it in. Now, for most metals, uh, particularly the ones we tested in this experiment, uh, we'll probably want to measure this in uh, KSI, which is going to be kips per square inch. Uh, so the data we have is given to us in pound force. Uh, so I'm going to take the pound force divided by the initial area. That would give me PSI, and then I have a conversion there to get me from pounds to kips. Uh, again, I'm going to make sure I lock in uh, that the, I'm always dividing by that initial area to get engineering stress. So I use the dollar signs to lock the, let that particular cell, and then I drag and drop it to the bottom. Now we are ready to create our stress strain plot. So I will go to insert and graph. I'm going to choose an XY scatter plot. Uh, so it's important to use an XY scatter plot because this will put the data in uh, to scale, so it'll make sure that the x and y axes have a proper scale. Uh, also, I want to choose a scatter plot, and I'm going to choose the straight line option. When you do experimental tests, you don't necessarily want to assume behavior between two points. Uh, because we do have enough data, uh, and it's recording every you know tenth of a second in this particular sample, uh, we will assume that it is somewhat linear between points and so we can go ahead and use the straight line and the markers to get us the data points uh, so that it shows up on our plot. I'm going to go ahead and change the title of this plot, and now I need to add data to the plot. Uh, so what I will do is I will click in the chart area, right-click, and select data, 
And now you can see here I'm selecting the data for both the X values and the Y values. I want to select all the data for stress and strain, and I've used a little shortcut here. Um, on my Mac, it's like com Command Shift Down, it'll take you to the very last data point, but you can always just drag and drop. I think on Windows, it's like uh, Control Shift Down, and it'll produce the same result for you. Here, if you look at the stress strain curve, it's kind of mirror image or flipped upside down, and this is because the UTM uh, records tension forces as negative and compression forces as positive. Um, and so I just need to flip them around. So I created another little column in here uh, that just takes the one uh, column E, multiplies it by a negative one, and now you can see the new values here in column F. Then I went ahead and updated the data to select from column F so that the plot looks more like we expect the tension, uh, tension positive uh, and the positive X, Y axes for this stress strain graph. You can see that there's a couple data that is recorded after the specimen failed. Uh, so I'm going to just go down into the data and just delete those last two points uh, so that my stress strain curve now accurately captures like the point of fracture there um, at the far right end of the plot. I'm going to go in and go to the chart area, you know, chart design, and I'm going to select, uh, you know, I like to have axes, uh, labels on the axes for the X and Y axis. Uh, so I've gone ahead and selected one that has like a title, an X and Y axis, and shows a little legend. Uh, and you can see now I'm just going to reformat this. I'm just changing font sizes on both the axes and uh, the labels. And then I'm going to add some tick marks here. Uh, so you can see the hash mark across the X axis uh, for the different values of strain. I've added in my units on those axes. I'm going to format the plot area and give it a, you know, sort of a black uh, line border. And so this is just all cosmetic, but I think really helps to format your plots so that it appears uh, a little bit ni nicer than just, you know, just the basic that uh, we had before. That will wrap up our stress strain curve for one of our specimens. And then, of course, we have to repeat these for the other specimens as part of this lab.